By now, you've probably heard that the incandescent light bulb has been phased out, banned, however you want to describe it. And it is creating some problems for shoppers at big box stores and at hardware stores. So what are you supposed to do to light your home? That's what we're going to deal with today. How do you replace the incandescent light bulb with LED? And how do you do it the right way? My name is JP Bedell. In my past life, I was a theatrical lighting designer. I worked on global events, global retail. Today, I work with the best lighting designers in New York City to help them choose products to make their designs amazing. And I'm going to help you light your home. The incandescent light bulb has been phased out for efficacy reasons. Um, some say it's about time. Some are really upset about it. It doesn't really matter. This is the world we live in now. There have been articles in the media, in the New York Times, in New Yorker Magazine, about how LED is not good for you, or LED is not a good light source, or it's not quite the same as incandescent. I'm here to tell you that while it is not quite the same as incandescent, you can light your home in a more energy efficient way if you choose the right products. First of all, let me say this. What is right for you and what you enjoy in your own home is your business, not mine. But there are certain commonalities about LED light bulbs that you should know when you go to the store and you're making your judgment. To try and make it easier for the average consumer to understand what the light bulbs are on the shelf, the government instituted this idea of the lighting facts label. This comes from the DOE. Here's what you're going to find on the lighting facts label. Okay, First is brightness, which is in this case 800 lumens. 800 lumens, just so you know, is about the amount of light that comes out of a 60 watt incandescent light bulb. All right, so 800 lumens. Then this is your estimated yearly energy cost, which we're not going to really talk about today. Your lifetime, if it's on for three hours a day at 22.8 years. Light appearance, which is 3000 Kelvin. Okay, so the Kelvin scale, this is important just to understand. The Kelvin scale is a way of describing the warmness or the coolness of the light source. Kelvin scales for LED typically range from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6000 Kelvin. 6000 Kelvin is bright blue, closer to natural light or daylight. 2700 Kelvin is like a dimmed incandescent light bulb. Fun fact about incandescent, normally it comes in at about 28,000, uh, sorry, 2850 Kelvin. So the, a 2700K lamp is a little warmer than that. 3000 Kelvin is slightly cooler, but it tends to give nice color, uh, color and atmosphere. Something that's missing from what you just saw is CRI, or Color Rendering Index. Color Rendering Index, we won't go super in-depth here, is an, uh, a scale created for light sources that is meant to, it goes from 0 to 100, with 100 being perfect. Think of the sun at noon, um, or halogen light bulbs were often given a 100 rating. Um, the idea is that with that higher CRI, you're getting more vivid colors reflected back to you. That's why I have this, which is my daughter's art wall behind me, so that I'm gonna hold up some different sources of color when we light up these light bulbs to give you a sense for how they're reflecting that color back. So when you're looking at, the, at these light sources, think about your lumen package, 800 lumens, again, equivalent to a 60 watt light bulb. It's helpful if you think in lumens in terms of watts because these 60 watt replacements very soon, a whole new generation of homeowners isn't going to know what a 60 watt light bulb even was. So it's not going to be a relevant measure for them. Um, your color temperature, and if you can find it out, and not every manufacturer does this, the CRI or color rendering index of that source. Now the test you're about to see. So um, in order to facilitate this test, I decided to go with three different light bulbs. The first is going to be what I'm calling sort of the budget category. This was the first light bulb I found on Amazon. This is the Amazon Basics. Uh, a lamp. The second light bulb I chose is the Fight Electric 60 watt replacement, 8.8 .8 watts. This guy was the top rated light bulb on Wirecutter. And Wirecutter I thought was a sort of more high end reviewing website. Um, a lot of people follow their recommendations. This happens to be the 3000K. This is also a 90 plus CRI light source, okay? So we went from 80 uh, CRI on Amazon to 90 plus here with the Fight. Otherwise, the lumen package is the same. We did get slightly cooler with 3000K. All right. And then last but certainly not least, I went for a more high-end option. This one's a little bit more expensive. This is the Sora Vivid Lamp. Okay. Sora Vivid um, is owned by a parent company called Chorus. Um, Sora is a leader in different um, lighting technologies. 
This is 900 lumens and 11 watts, so it's going to be a little bit brighter than our other two. Still 3000K, but we go up to 90, I'm going to get that on the screen there, 95 CRI. So let's see if we can notice a difference. And this test is going to be extremely simple. This right here, this is our test, <laughs> our test subject. It is a $30 floor lamp that I bought on Amazon. It's one of those that packs in a box about this big. You roll out the shade yourself. What I did here was I'm adding a plug-in dimmer, right? Very similar to what you're gonna find in a lot of homes. Just a simple slide dimmer that you can buy anywhere. I happen to get this on Amazon. Um, my goal here was to try and create the most common at-home lighting setup, right? Not a lot of bells and whistles, inexpensive floor lamp, inexpensive dimmer, three different light bulbs. Let's really just make it about the, the lamp itself. You are going to see all of these within the shade. And the reason I'm doing that is, first of all, you shouldn't have bare light bulbs in your home. Second of all, these lamps are designed, if you take a look at it, these are designed to be within a shade because if you look at the way this is, this dome is designed, the LEDs are sitting, I'm gonna come around here, flat on this side, okay? And they're lighting outward at about 120 degrees to light this whole dome. The guts, the sort of electronics of the bulb live in here, okay? So what's happening is line voltage is passing through the socket. It's going into a very, very tiny little transformer, turning it into the native voltage of the LEDs. And all the electronics that support dimming are living in here, okay? They're really meant not to be direct view. They're meant to be inside a lamp. And that's why we're going to do it with this. Up on this wall are some of my daughter's artwork. I'm going to put some other colors up here so you can see some saturated reds and blues. And then we're going to take a look and um, see what we think. One more note about the testing for these light bulbs. It is very difficult with digital cameras to truly render the color that you're going to see from these, right? So I'm just going to have to give you my honest opinion. What I'm going to do is set the... Um, the settings on the camera to a fixed setting. What that's going to be is a fixed aperture, a fixed shutter speed, and a fixed CCT of 2800 Kelvin. I'm doing that so that you can see the 2700K a little warmer than the base and the 3000K a little cooler than the base. It's the best I can do with different CCTs to kind of give you an accurate idea of which ones are warmer and cooler, okay? So that's what you're gonna see in the camera settings. Nothing else is going to change. The camera's also in a fixed position. So you're not gonna see differences as far as I zoom in and out or, or anything like that. So this is the Amazon Basics light bulb. And you can kind of see, looking at the red, the yellow, and the blue in the field here. You know, to my eye, it does okay. Um, you know, what I'm really noticing is this red right in here is reading more like orange, right? It's not popping as true red in this field. The yellow is kind of pulling as a green. The blue is doing okay, which is what you would kind of expect. LED naturally sort of shows blues a little better than it does warmer colors. Um, the portrait up here looks okay. You know, the pinks are a little bit muted. Is it bad? No, it's not bad. But even holding my hand out underneath it, you can sort of see there's a flatness to it, right? Is it awful? No, it's not awful. Is it great? No, it's not great either. So now we're gonna run the dimming test on that simple dimmer. I'm gonna hold this up over here. As I dim this down, I'm gonna hold it right under here. So it all dimmed pretty well. Um, what I would say is that you can really, you can see some stepping in there. And especially in that like below 50% range, you start to really see the steps. But overall, it's fairly smooth. And if I run it down at a more normal speed, the other thing you're going to be able to see is, you know, the high ends, there's a significant drop off. So when I start to run this at speed, you can see that dimming curve goes sort of like bright, 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 bright. It's very steppy. Um, not the worst, and you could do worse than a light bulb like this, um, but that's the Amazon Basics. Let's see how it, how it holds up to the other ones. Okay. Here's the Fight electric bulb we talked about before. Okay, so a couple of big differences you're going to notice right off the bat. Um, the camera may not be picking this up, but this light source is definitely cooler. It's in that 3000K range, um, and you really notice it. 
Despite that, though, despite the cooler light source, this red really does read more red to my eye. Again, the camera may not be picking it up as much as my eyes do, but it's definitely a little bit more red, the back, uh, the back cover of this book. I can also see the reds in the portrait up here a little more, and this yellow seems a little less muted. Um, is it dramatic? No, I cannot, I cannot say that it is dramatic. Um, the other interesting thing is, despite being um, a, 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 the same 800 lumens, this one doesn't feel quite as bright to me and to my eye. A lot of this is subjective, no doubt about it, but I didn't see it as much. What you do see really interestingly is the purple that lives up here is reading really nicely. The, um, the tones in here in this portrait are, really, are reading really nicely. The blue still pops, although it seems a slightly more green to me, as does the sort of the blue-green and the yellow here is a little bit funky, but it's not terrible. Um, Am I being honest with you right now? The average person is not going to see a whole lot of difference. The interesting thing to me is the fight bulb has a slightly longer stem. It sits a little bit higher off the base. And I think that's contributing to a little bit of the darkness that we're getting over here that we didn't have with the Amazon bulb. The Amazon bulb was a little bit squatter in there. I think the light source was a little closer to center in this particular lamp. And so we got a little bit more light push. I feel like we're getting more darkness through the shade than we did with the Amazon. Um, so that's also an interesting thing, just to sort of look at and play. Like, the only real give back with the 80 CRI was that your reds didn't pop. So if you're using a really diverse color palette, reds and browns and oranges, you might want to stick with something that's higher CRI. And we're going to do a quick dimming test, just as we did with the Amazon light. We're going to do this with the fight bulb. And here we go. Okay, I'm gonna pop this back on the full. Much better dimming performance out of the fight ball, for sure. I'm gonna slowly bring this in. And again, I don't know if the camera can see it as well as your eye can, but much less steppiness in the dimming on the fight bulb. So if dimming the lights and getting that up and down and getting really nice light, light levels are important to you, I promise you the fight bulb is going to be your winner. Um, one more time, I'm gonna step this up slowly. The Amazon curve was very choppy on the way down. The fight curve is much, much better. It's a way smoother, way softer curve that I think will work with a lot of different kinds of dimmers you may have in your house. So clear winner on that one is the, um, is the fight bulb. All right, last but certainly not least. Okay, and this brings us to the Sora lamp. This is the Sora Vivid that I showed you at the opening. Um, very different experience with the Sora. And it's really interesting because I think there are things that people will really like about this lamp and things that people might, li might not like as much. The first thing, it is slightly brighter. We knew that off the outset. This is an 11 watt lamp versus the other two, which are basically nine. So we are getting certainly more pop out of this light bulb. Interesting. Right off the bat, the red reads as a very true red. You're not getting that orange tinge. It's not shifting that color nearly as much as the other two bulbs. So the color rendering is certainly better. This portrait looks really pops. It's, you know, I see every color in here. I see the purple in this piece of art. I see the colors up here in the yellow. The yellow reads as a much truer yellow. Um, and the greens and blues in here are really true. So your color rendering is by far the best with the Sora lamp. I can't, I can't pretend to, to say otherwise. That said, this 3000 Kelvin is much cooler to the eye and trending more pink than the Amazon or the fight lamp. So if the fight lamps were, were shifting more blue-greenish, I should say, these are shifting more reddish. So in the shade itself, it's bringing out some pink, which is kind of interesting um, and might be off-putting for some people. Like when this lights up pink, it might be strange uh, to your eye. But the actual light coming out of the top of this lamp, very clean, very white, and you're really getting true whites out of it across the board. Thing you might not like, the beam is quite lateral out of this guy, right? So there's a lot of light coming out of here, a lot of light coming out of here. There's definite fall off in the bottom third of this shade. So if you were setting this up as a reading lamp, this light bulb is going to be a little dimmer down here. 
And these are the kinds of subtle things with LED bulbs that you don't necessarily always notice. You'd be if this light was in a, a like an articulated like a, an accent light that was doing something like that and pointed at your book, you'd be fine. But if you're reading this book under here, you can sort of see that light fall off down here. And then even here, holding my hand under it, color rendering is great, but it is a definite lateral throw out of the SOAR lamp, much more so than a downward throw, making it not a great reading lamp. So these are some interesting things about bulb shape and about where the light actually comes out. As an up light, it's fantastic. A ton of light coming out of the top of this fixture. Okay, really quickly before we, we close this up, let's do the dimming test on the Sora. Couple of interesting things here. First of all, the dimming on the Sora is better than the Amazon, but not as good as the Fight. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'll say is it does not dim to off. Bring that dimmer all the way down and you still have light coming out of this. So you will also have to turn off the switch. So the bottom end light output of this guy, and this is not easy to see because of the camera settings, it doesn't actually turn all the way off. I'll show that separately. But here, if I bring this camera up and over the top, you can see that light bulb is still on, even though the dimmer, well, you can't see the dimmer, but trust me, the dimmer is completely shut off. So in a residential application, that's gonna be a real problem because you won't be able to fully see, uh, or you won't be able to fully turn this off with that again, flipping the switch. So slide dimmer, not gonna get you all the way to off with the sword. Well, so then the next question you're gonna have is, which is the best light bulb? Which one should I use? Here's what I'll say. It comes down to personal preference. It comes down to what you're gonna enjoy. I'm gonna break it down for you this way. If budget is your primary concern, go with the Amazon. Is it the best performing light bulb? No. It is not going to render your color the best and its dimming performance was not great. However, it is, a much more, it is more affordable than the other two options. The Fight Bulb, the F-E-I-T, uh, Fight Bulb, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Fight, tell me if I'm not. Um, is probably the best balance of performance and price. It is over 90 CRI. It dimmed very well in our tests, including dimming all the way down to nearly off. Um, it rendered color really well, and it shot light out laterally really nicely. So I can understand why Wirecutter chose it for its sort of all-around pick. It's an affordable light bulb that's going to last a long time that performs really well. The Sora light bulb was a very nice performer in terms of color. The spectrum was beautiful coming out of this light source. The colors look great. However, the dimming wasn't great, and the very bright lateral and upward throw versus a downward and sort of surrounding throw is going to be off-putting for people. Um, that doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's a no-go if you have important art that you want to light. If your color choices are really vivid and you want to make sure all of those show up, go with the Sora lamp. It is worth noting that the Sora is the most expensive of all these options, so you really have to need that color, I think, to justify the investment. That's our review of these light bulbs. If you have questions about what else to buy, because here's the thing, A lamps like this, like these LED light bulbs, are not gonna look good in every form factor. They're not gonna look good in, in every kind of light source. And if you've got recessed down lights and you're trying to put new light bulbs in them, don't use these, use a PAR lamp. If you wanna see ra uh, ratings and reviews of PAR lamps next, hit that like and subscribe button, leave me a comment and let me know, because I would love to know what you wanna learn about when it comes to lighting in your home. Thanks so much, and I will see you on the next one.